Hello, this is Jen from Peace Presbyterian 3B program. I am doing a voiceover that which is a recording after the, the fact because I forgot to have my microphone on during the 3B program last session. And that wasn't the microphone that amplifies in the room. It was the microphone that goes directly to this video recording. So the video recording is silent. But I thought we could fix the video by adding some sound after the fact. And I just want to welcome you, welcome all the people that are watching online. And thank you for thank you for watching. I hope that this program is helping you to be able to exercise and also exercise your your body, your mind, and your faith. And I hope that um, this is a blessing to you. It, it is certainly a blessing to me. And so now let us pray. I just thank you, God, for the gift of Zoom, for the gift of um, YouTube and technology. I thank you that we are able to participate even even if we can't get to church or even if our schedules are conflicting with the 3 v sessions in person. And just thank you, God, for bringing these people to us, for bringing us together through technology. And I just pray, pray a special blessing over the people that are watching for everyone um, that you could be safe and um, benefit from these exercises and activities. And this is just a review of what we'll be doing today, a scripture, walking, exercises, fun facts, humor, brain teasers, and we didn't have time for the, devo the devotional, but we did have a good time with the scripture. And the these announcements are just mainly for the people that are coming in person, but there are some forms to fill out. And then some reminders are to um, follow your doctor's instructions. Don't do anything that I'm recommending if it conflicts with what you've been taught by your doctor or your health professional. And use your best judgment. Be safe. If you're doing something and it doesn't feel safe, you might need some more support, like holding on to a solid object while you're exercising, especially if you're standing up. And um, you might need to change the movement, make it smaller or do something a different way, which I'll provide multiple options during the exercises. Even thinking about making the movement can help because your muscles tighten as you're imagining that you're doing the activity. And definitely stop if you're too short of breath to talk. That's an indication that you're exercising too hard. I know there are athletes that exercise like that, but that's just a general rule of thumb for mild exercise. And right now, I think there are some people that are asking questions or commenting on how things were going for them in this video. Some people felt the stretch in their knee, which felt good. Um, you know, various things that that they noticed that they were maybe doing the exercises throughout the day, even while sitting in their easy chair. Okay, and so now it's time for the five minute walk. And I'm mentioning that there are some brooms in the corner of the room. 
I brought some brooms for people that have shoulder injuries or shoulder pain. Um, there's a way to do the exercises without having to lift your arm. If you hold the broomstick with the tip on the floor on a non-slip surface, and then you move the broom broomstick forward and back or side to side, you can move your shoulder without having to lift it. And so if you're at home watching this, um, you might be able to walk up and down the hallway of your, of your house, or if there's a loop, like in my condo, there's a, a loop where I can just walk around the, around and around the loop. And this is, this is one of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 91. It's helped me through a lot of situations that were difficult, you know, things that made me afraid, like um, doing home visits when there were bed bugs or uh, confronting different kind of viruses like the H1N1 virus when it was around, or even when when COVID started and I was doing home visits then. I, I kept seeing and hearing about Psalm 91 when COVID started and that was very comforting to me, like a sign that I was gonna be safe. I even saw Psalm 91 on a dish towel in someone's kitchen as I was doing home visits. So now we're reading Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. And now I'm talking about the, there's a book about Psalm 91 that I read. And, um, the author was talking about a hen and how she clucks and she raises her feathers when there's danger. And the chicks come and they all get under her feathers and then she puts them down so they're safe under the protection of the feathers. And that's just a really good image of what we should do or what I think we should do is run run to run to God for safety to come under God's protection okay now we're going on to the first exercise to circle your ankle with your knee raised so you can do it sitting down or standing up so you lift your knee a little bit, and then you can circle your ankle clockwise, counterclockwise. And some people find this easier to do standing up because it's less pressure on the hip, especially if you've had a hip injury. I find it helpful to hold on to a solid object while I'm doing this standing up. Or you can put a piece of paper under your foot or a plastic shopping bag. And you can slide your foot forward and back while it's on the paper. Or you can move your ankle while it's resting on the floor instead of lifting it up off the floor. Multiple ways to do this. I find it helpful to push my the leg that's not exercising, I push it down into the floor for stability. There you can see me losing my balance, so it would be good if I was holding on to something. And I'm doing something wrong. I have my paper on the floor while I'm trying to stand there, so that's not very safe. I could slip.
There, I picked it up. Oh, now you can see that I am sliding my foot forward and back while it's on the paper. And that's a very cheap stationary exercise bike. You could even use two pieces of paper if you wanted to. But I find it a little bit more stable to use one at a time. So that way you can stabilize yourself with your foot planted on the floor while the other one is moving. Oh, and I thought you could envision people could, I thought we could envision that we're warming up to get under the wings for protection, the wings of God. Now this exercise is just um, going up on your toes and then onto your heels while you're sitting, which you can do sitting or standing. And I thought we could think about walking in God's safety. When we know God is protecting us, I think it's easier to, to take a risk and to keep going in our lives that are often challenging. There I'm doing the up on my toes and then onto my heels while I'm standing up. Okay, now this exercise is the toe exercise. And if you're at home, you have an advantage. You, you could take your shoes off at home and stretch your toes out and then pull your toes under. Spread your toes out and then pull your toes under. And you can hold it and do it slowly to make it, make it more effective. If you have bare feet and you're doing it on a smooth surface, that can help you feel what you're doing more as well. Oh, and, and you could also try picking something up with your toes from the floor. And that's that's good exercise for your arches, strengthens your arches. Okay, now this is a new exercise. We hadn't done this one before. And it's kind of an odd way to start. You start with your knees together and your toes pointing inward toward each other. And then you pivot on your heels and then you go up onto your toes again. And I thought it was kind of like dancing. So you start with your toes together and your knees together, going up on your toes. I don't recommend doing it standing up, but it was easier for people to see in person when I was standing up.
And I thought I thought we could think about when we know that we're safe in God's protection, it's easier to dance. It's easier to be filled with joy. Just feeling that safety of God, of God's protection. And there I'm talking about my high school days when we used to dance like that. Okay, now this is marching. And I like doing marching. Now this is a, this piece of fabric that I have there, it's it's just a shelf liner. So it's, it's a non-slip material, but I like that because when I lift one leg, it helps to push my foot down into the floor for support. And with that non-slip surface, my foot doesn't slip and gives me more grip. And you can also do marching standing up. It helps to hold on to something for support. And this is a challenge that I was teaching is that you can use the opposite arm. Oh, I'm doing it wrong. You do the op opposite arm with the opposite leg. There, I think I'm, I'm finally getting it. There we go. So you swing the opposite arm with the opposite leg. And that's good for your coordination when you're walking. And I thought we could envision running towards God's protection to get under God's feathers. Okay, now the, the next exercise is isometrics. That means that you're tightening your muscles without moving. So we're going to put, put your hands between your knees as you're pushing your knees toward each other, so you're resisting against yourself. So as you pull your knees toward each other, you're resisting with your hands. And then as you pull your knees apart, you're resisting with your hands. So your muscles are tightening with, even though nothing is really moving. And people were asking what area of the body this strengthens. Well, it strengthens your legs, particularly your hips, as well as your arms and your stomach, your core muscles. And then I was also explaining that it's good to do it gently. So you're not, you're not pushing with all of your strength. It's good to do it gently. Doing it gently actually helps you use the correct muscles. If you're doing it too hard, you might tighten everything, even your, your neck and your mouth. But if you do it softly, then the muscles that are supposed to be working will work better. This is an, this is an alternative to that where you can step out and in with your legs. And it's good to do it with some something to hold on to, stepping out and in. And that's a little bit like dancing too. And there I should have removed my non-slip material from the floor before doing that. Okay, the next exercise is stretching your kind of stretching your fingers and thumb. So you start with your hands together and then you slide one hand up so you can move your fingers and your thumb. 
You're just move, gently moving your fingers back and forth and your thumb. And you can do it more slowly and hold it, you know, if that feels good to stretch it. And I thought we could envision re releasing our grip or relaxing our grip on the things of the world that make us feel safe, like money or financial security. And then um, reaching for God's protection. And the next exercise is similar. It's circling your fingers. So you're taking one hand and you're circling your fingers of the other hand, just gently. And somebody had suggested that we could do a challenge by not helping with the other hand, you know, circling your fingers without without the help of the other hand. And now after all of this exercise, my hands started to feel a little bit tired. So I recommended doing, the, doing this stretch gently. It's called the prayer stretch. And you just gently push you keep your hands together and then you just gently push down and it start it stretches in your wrists. And someone had recommended just shaking it out. So we did that. The next thing that we did was fall prevention tips. And so I was talking about, well, what do you do if something is on the floor and you need to get reach to the floor to pick it up? And I talked about reachers. And that's something that we use a lot in um, home care. I have a sample there. And they have reachers all at different stores like Home Depot, Walgreens, Walmart, in the pharmacy section usually. And there are different types with different kinds of different kind of grips at the end. Even some of them have magnets. But you can use that to pick something up from the floor safely so you don't have to bend down. The only problem is it's kind of hard to lift something that's heavy or big with that. And if you need support, you can hold on to something solid while you're reaching with the other hand. This is another technique where you can sit down and then move the object toward you so it's close to you and then pick it up while you're sitting in the chair. If you're sitting in a walker seat, just make sure that you lock the brakes before you sit down. And then, you know, if you don't, can't get it with the reacher, you can reach while you're sitting in the chair. And I recommended putting one hand on your knee for support to protect your back. Now, if you need both hands to pick the object up, you could push your feet into the floor so that you're supporting your back while you're reaching down. Yep. 
Yeah, this reacher has kind of big grips. Some of the reachers have smaller grips with a magnet. Those are in the medical stores. They usually have smaller grips with a magnet on the end. And the reachers come in different lengths. Sometimes you need the reacher to be shorter. That one's pretty long that I have there. And then another way to reach down to the floor would be to use the same position that we used for standing up and sitting down into a chair with your nose over your toes. And if there's a solid object close by, it's good to hold on to that while you're, while you're bending down with your nose over your toes. There, I'm holding on to something while I'm bending down with my nose over my toes. And if, if you don't have a free hand, you can even lean your body against a solid object. Like when I'm putting my socks on, I like to lean, lean against my body, my bed. I lean against my bed with my leg and that gives me support while I'm bending down. You could even lean against the back of your car if you're trying to reach into your trunk. Or lean against your counter while you're reaching into the dishwasher. There, I'm talking about putting my sock on while I'm reaching, leaning against the bed. Now we're moving on to some new exercises. And with these exercises, we're using a soft foam ball. I don't know if you've ever seen those balls that are for stress, stress relief, just a soft foam ball. A lot of people were using those balls because my church, Liberty Community Church was giving those away. And we had a lot of those. We do uh, have some bigger foam balls that we ordered, especially for the, the 3B program that are about six inches in diameter. But but you could you could squeeze just about anything that's soft. You could squeeze a little pillow or a stuffed animal to strengthen your hands. This first exercise is just squeezing gently with your hands, squeezing the ball gently. The people that have larger balls, they could squeeze with both hands at the same time. But I, in my bag there, I have a smaller, one of those stress balls. And that one is so small that you could only do one hand at a time, one hand at a time. And then you can repeat with the other hand.
to make the exercise more challenging, you could move your hand farther away from your body at different angles while you're squeezing. I thought about squeezing a balloon, but that could be dangerous. It could pop while you're squeezing it. Unless it was a balloon filled with flour, which we used to have those. Somewhere that I worked, we had something like that. Okay, now this is the next exercise where you squeeze the ball between your feet with your thighs resting on the chair. And what's easier is squeezing the ball between your knees instead of squeezing it between your feet. And, and for this, you can use a pillow. You can use, you can even put, put your hand in a fist and put it between your knees and get that kind of same effect. Oh, now we're talking about juggling. <laughs> I think someone asked me if I could juggle. And I said, well, my brother can. He's very good. Now, this exercise is bouncing and catching. So this one would be hard to use a pillow. It's better to have a ball for this one, where you're bouncing the ball, and then you're catching it with two hands. And those stress balls worked pretty well for this. If it's hard to do that, you can, I, I put down an easy modification of rolling the ball on your thigh. And this is a good opportunity for using the reaching techniques that we talked about earlier. If you do end up with a runaway ball. Now the next one is bouncing the ball and catching it with one hand. First with the right hand and then with the left hand. And that one required a little bit more coordination. And again, an easy modification was re rolling the ball on your thigh. I suppose you could even roll the ball on your table if you're at home. Roll the ball on your easy chair armrest. Now we're gonna talk about stretching techniques. And I'm explaining that when, when we stretch, it's good to stretch gently, not too far. Just stretch with a slight stretch and then as your muscle relaxes, then you can stretch a little bit further. And so the tension should and your muscles should subside as you're stretching. If you're stretching too hard, it might tighten up more. And then I talked about avoiding bouncing when you're stretching, stretching slowly and gently. If you're Having trouble breathing while you're stretching, that's probably too hard. And 
And then I talked about a technique called contract relax. And so that's where you tighten up that muscle that you're trying to stretch before you relax it, which can help it relax more. So you tighten the muscle that you're going to stretch first and then you relax and stretch it. And that, then not worrying about how far you're stretching. Like for me, I can't touch my toe, but I feel the stretch in my leg and that's what's important. Okay, so now this is the exercise where you keep your thigh on the chair and you straighten out your knee and then you circle, circle your ankle clockwise and counterclockwise. And this is a good stretch where you can feel it stretching in your hamstring and even in your calf muscles. There's an e easy modification. You can slide the paper forward and back on the floor. I think moving the ankle helps take the focus off of the stretch that's going on in the in the muscles kind of distracts you from that, which helps. Okay, so now this exercise is a stretch of the inner thigh muscles. And so that's one way that you can do it by straightening out your knee and sliding it out to the side. And now I'm showing another way that you can do it by putting your heel on the paper and then sliding the paper out and in. Now I'm showing a challenging way of doing it. You can do it standing up like that with a, with a little bit of a lunge. And you can hold on to something for support while doing that, like a counter. I like the kitchen sink. That's a really good place for support. You can, because you can, if you start tipping backwards, well, you can hold on to the sink and you won't tip backwards. And now we're doing the hamstring stretch. And so you put your heel out away from the chair with your knee straight and then lean forward a little bit. But I'm talking about right now, I'm talking about keeping your back upright. So you're leaning forward, but you're keeping your back upright. And that way you're stretching from you're stretching your hamstring and not your back. And then some people wanted a challenge, which I didn't have one on there, but you could you could do that stretch standing up. Someone had recommended doing that stretch with a ball, rolling the ball up and down on their leg while they were stretching their hamstring. And that did work pretty well.
And that's just doing that stretch standing up again. I'm stretching a little bit fast. It's probably better to do it a little bit more slowly. This next exercise is a side bend. So you just reach your hand down and stretch as you're sitting in your chair. And it's good to keep your feet planted in the floor for support. And you can even use that shelf liner or that non-slip material under your feet to get more of a grip. Planting your feet into the floor gives your back good support. Or you can keep your hands on the chair while you're, while you're leaning. Or your, you could keep your hands on the armrest of your chair. And that would help you stretch, but give you support. I'm talking about how much it helps to push your feet into the floor when you're reaching. Really gives your back a lot of support. The next slide is called ballet, ballet side bends. And so, so now we're reaching our arm up and over our head, if you can. And I'm supporting myself with my other hand on the chair while I'm reaching. And all of this is gentle. And if you can't reach your arm that high, you could have it a little bit lower or do it without reaching. This next exercise is called, let it all hang down. So you put one, put one hand on your knee and you just lean forward as far as is comfortable. Make sure you keep one hand on your knee for support. And even let your head hang down, let everything hang down. And then you can repeat it with the other hand. And it helps to have your feet planted firmly into the floor. That helps support your back when you come back up. Now, this is a review of standing and sitting with your nose over your toes. Landing as lightly as possible, like you're landing in an airplane.
And you definitely can use your hands on the armrest of your chair or on the seat of your chair for support for that one. And now we're gonna move on to the riddle. What North American landmark is constantly moving backwards? And it's Niagara Falls. The rim is worn down about two and a half feet each year because of the millions of gallons of water that rush over Niagara Falls every minute. And some people, commented on Minnehaha Falls and how it looks different now than it did when they were younger. I thought about St. Anthony Falls that is now concrete. And now we're running out of time, so I'm rushing through the slides to find the one that I'm looking for. And these, this is a new exercise, elbow bends. It's kind of like, like elbow curls. And I'm actually not doing it the way that it is, has been designed. So you're supposed to start with your hands with your palms on, on your thighs and then bend your hands toward your shoulders. So there's a little bit of wrist rotation. Starting with your hands on your thighs and then bending, bending your hands up toward your shoulders. And then part two of this exercise is starting with your arms out at your sides. And now is when I'm going to show you how you can use a, a broomstick to help make this easier if you have shoulder pain. So you keep the keep the broom stick on a non-slip surface and you can push the broomstick out and in while you have your hand on the broomstick. And I'm showing that you can have your hand as high or as low as you like to make it comfortable for your shoulder. And you can push the broomstick di multiple different directions as well. Forward and back or out and in. I think the important thing with shoulders is to not exercise into a lot of pain. So if it's really hurting, then it's better better to change the exercise and do it a little bit different. Now this is uh, some humor. An older couple was having trouble remembering things. So they went to the doctor for a checkup where they found they were physically doing quite well. However, since they were concerned about forgetting things, the doctor su suggested that they write things down to help them remember. Later that night, while watching television, the husband got up and announced, I'm getting a snack. Would you like something? Yes, his wife replied, I'd like a dish of ice cream. No problem, said the husband. Should you write that down, the wife asked. Besides, I'd really like a cherry on top. No, I can remember that, the husband replied. Well, I think you should, the wife insisted. Please put whipped cream on the ice cream too. Now I know you should write it down. Got it, said the husband. Ice cream, cherry, whipped cream, no need to write it down. The husband headed to the kitchen and the wife settled down to watch more television. 20 minutes later, the husband returned and proudly handed his wife a tray with a plate of bacon and eggs on it. The wife studied it, looked at her husband and said, 
I told you to write my order down. You forgot the toast. So both of them had forgotten. Now this is just a preview. This pendulum exercise is something that I'm going to get more into next time. It's something that was suggested by somebody that was there as an exercise that's really helpful when you have a lot of shoulder pain or when you're recovering. Shoulder recovery. And now we're just gonna skip to the one of the final exercises, which is just raising your shoulders up to your ears and lowering your shoulders with a deep breath, saying, I am safe. I am safe in God's protection. I like breathing in when my shoulders go up and breathing out when my shoulders go down. All right, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.